What's up YouTube? So over the past couple of weeks, I've been testing out the Canon EOS R for all of my photography and video work. This camera is really awesome, but I don't think I've had quite enough experience to give it a full review just yet. I do, however, think I'm ready to talk a little bit about the glass that I've been using on this camera. So for reference right now, I'm shooting on the 15 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. That's what's videoing me right now. But the other lens that I have that I want to really talk about today is this one right here, the Canon RF. 50 millimeter f1.2. So for the longest time, I've always said that the 50 millimeter focal length is my absolute favorite focal length. And I've shot on a ton of different 50 millimeter equivalent lenses, including ones from Panasonic, Fujifilm, Sony, and even Canon EF cameras. And probably more than that, honestly. Like I have vintage 50 millimeter lenses and everything. I just love the focal length. But this lens, however, this 50 millimeter f1.2 from Canon, it's their RF mount one for the EOS R cameras. It is absolutely, without a doubt, my favorite 50 millimeter lens that I have ever, ever used. Again, I don't know if I've had enough time with this lens to give it a full review, but I do kind of want to give it my first impression. So I want to keep it relatively simple today. I want to talk about its autofocus at f1.2, which is actually really impressive. It's image quality at f1.2, and finally it's build quality. And again, we're focusing on everything at f1.2 because I think anybody who's actually thinking about buying this lens is buying it in order to shoot at f1.2. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. To start, let's talk about autofocus. Now, Lenses like this that can shoot at an f1.2 aperture, which there honestly aren't that many of them. I know that Canon has a couple EF versions of 50 millimeters that are really, really fast. They do have the old 50 millimeter 1.2 EF lens that I've had a little bit of experience with, but these lenses are just notorious for missing autofocus. And honestly, it's probably because the depth of field is so shallow that any little bit of user error on behalf of whoever's shooting the lens can result in it completely missing focus. There are certain copies of lenses that are just inherently bad at autofocus and they just miss and maybe it's a result of the body you're using the lens on, but regardless. The reason I bring up autofocus is because this thing is incredibly, incredibly impressive when it comes to autofocus. When you're shooting this lens wide open at f1.2 and you choose any focus point on the Canon EOS R, it literally just locks on instantaneously. Typically, fast 50 millimeter lenses will do a little bit of hunting where they focus past the thing and then come back and then eventually lock on. This one, however, does not do that at all. Whatever you lock it onto and you have pressed that shutter button, it just locks on instantaneously. Additionally, now with recent firmware updates to the Canon EOS R, it is extremely, extremely good with eye autofocus too. So take this image for example. This is obviously a picture of me right here that was taken by my younger brother. My younger brother is certainly not a professional photographer by any means, but I basically handed him my Canon EOS R with this lens on it. I had eye autofocus enabled on it and I was like, hey, just walk behind me and take a couple couple shots as I'm walking away from you and let's see what happens. And every single time that I would look back and look at the camera and my eye was visible to the camera, it just nailed autofocus. I have several versions of this shot that I could show you, but for the sake of time being, I'll just show you this one. But I'm telling you, every time that my eye was even slightly visible to the camera, it somehow just saw my eye and the lens instantaneously nailed focus on my eye, even at f1.2. I mean, it is so impressive. I'm almost just I'm blown away by this lens. The lens's perfect autofocus certainly contributes to its amazing image quality. Any shot that you're taking, as long as you have the focus point on the correct spot, you're almost guaranteed to have a tack sharp image. And this lens is absolutely tack sharp at f1.2, as long as you nail focus. There's certainly some human error that can be involved in there. But I can guarantee to you that this lens, if you hit focus, no matter what it is, it will fully resolve the 30 megapixel sensor on the Canon EOS R. I mean, it is tack sharp, there's minimal chromatic aberration, it handles flare extreme, extremely well, and I'm super impressed by the image quality as well. I'll show you a couple examples right here, and I'll try to kind of crop in on them so you can see just how sharp it was. So as a result of the f1.2 aperture on this lens, it completely just crushes the background of any image that you're taking. No matter what it is, if you get that person in the foreground in focus, it's gonna completely blur out the background, and it is awesome. I really love that effect. Now this lens is an f1.2 aperture, which is considerably faster than any other lens that I've ever shot on. I've shot on a lot of f1.4s, f1.8s, and even some like 50 millimeter f2 lenses. So this is much faster. It has a much larger aperture, but at the same time, it's faster 
but it's also sharper than many of those other lenses. I mean, I'm really impressed by it. And you definitely pay for it with this lens. I don't know what the exact price tag is on this thing, but I know it's over $2,000 brand new, so you certainly are gonna be paying for it. But honestly, the image quality that's coming out of this thing is fantastic and it's definitely worth it. The last thing that I wanna talk about as it relates to this lens is the build quality. And so a lot of other Canon L series lenses are made out of metal. This one, however, is not made out of metal. It's made out of this like really premium feeling plastic material. And I think that Canon did that in an attempt to shave down some of the weight on the lens. If you ever get this lens into your hands, you're gonna be like, holy crap, this thing is monstrous, number one. And it's also super heavy, I think just as a result of how much glass is inside of this thing. And so I think that they shave down some of the weight by using plastic on this, but I can promise you that if you get this thing into your hands, even though it's not metal and it's made out of this plastic material, it still feels super premium and it still feels like it's gonna be really, really durable for several years or potentially forever, who knows. In addition to the really nice feeling build quality, there's a couple of different switches and a couple of different dials or uh, rings on this lens. So first things first, there's a focus limiter switch so you can limit the distance of autofocus potentially if you're having some autofocus issues up close, you could limit it so that you can make sure you now autofocus. Additionally, there's an AF-MF or autofocus and manual focus switch, which is really nice to have. I love it when lenses have this built into it so you don't have to dive into the menus and change that setting. It also has a focus ring, obviously. It's a fly-by wire mechanism, which is a little bit different from what Canon has traditionally done on a lot of Canon's EF mount lenses. They've used a legit like physical manual focus ring where it moved the elements physically rather than electronically. I personally don't have that much of a preference between fly-by-wire and then physical manual focus. I don't really know what you would call physical manual focus. That sounds good to me, but I don't really have a preference. I don't mind the fly-by-wire. I know a lot of people don't like it, but fly-by-wire is perfectly fine to me. And then finally, one thing that people don't seem to really like that much, but I do like is Canon's new control ring. So it's an extra ring at the end of this that you can program to do just about anything. It makes a lot of sense to program like aperture onto that because a lot of old school lenses had aperture rings on the lenses. However, I programmed ISO into this and it's really nice because I can just reach out to my lens like I'm doing right now and adjust the ISO, which you know I'm messing up my exposure, but I think that's where I was at before. <laughs> but uh, it makes it super easy to just adjust that setting rather than like clicking any separate buttons or anything like that. You can just spin this ring, quickly adjust the ISO. And I personally, I'm a big fan of the control ring. A lot of people don't like it. I like it. But anyways, guys, those are my first impressions. Those are my thoughts. Really, really like this lens. I'm super impressed by the image quality. The autofocus is fantastic for an f1.2 lens. I'm super impressed by it. And the Canon EOS R with firmware updates and stuff like that seems to continually improve on the autofocus algorithms. It continues to make it better and better. So I don't know if they'll continue to improve on that, but I've been super impressed so far. Um, this lens is fantastic. Highly recommend it if you're looking for a super fast 50 millimeter lens and definitely a great lens. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up down below. I'd appreciate it big time. It helps for my videos to get seen by more people and it really just helps the channel out a ton. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more of my content in the future, definitely hit that subscribe button down below. And I've been uploading videos for the past couple of weeks, actually two times a week. So I'm doubling down on this YouTube thing. I've been really enjoying it. And so if you want to stay tuned, see more of my content, definitely hit that subscribe button and I'll plan on seeing you guys in my next video. Peace.